Hey, what's up guys? Nature from Protoculture. Welcome back to the channel. This video, I want to take a look at Falcon 2.5 again. We're going to be designing a pad sound from scratch using some of the new features in the 2.5 update. We're going to start off fairly basic with uh, just sort of an analog, simple analog pad as a base and then add in a few extra complexities using some of the new sequences uh, on top of that. So let's dive in. We're going to take a look. Right, and we're starting from scratch. We've got a brand new part uh, loaded up here. We're going to create a new program to get started. And let's drop a new layer and a key group on that layer. We'll see it automatically brings up our analog oscillator. I'm going to switch this to a analog stack and let's start working on this pad sound. Bring in two saw waves, which we are, oh, don't need the mapping right now. We can detune these slightly. Uh, we might make use of a few more. Yeah, let's actually detune these the same. Let's go with uh, eight cents that way minus eight cents the other direction and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard pan these to the right and these to the left so we should have a nice big stereo stereo effect going on there now uh, we're going to bring the gain down slightly because we're using quite a lot of oscillators here uh, let's also bring in a square wave in the center we'll add some pulse width modulation to that and I'm also just going to bring in a little bit of noise Right, there we go. That should be a good start. Uh, let's get this sounding a little bit more live to begin with. Um, we're going to add in a few modulation sources now just so that we can start shaping the sound. First thing I'm going to do is add in another analog ADSR. And we can rename this filter. Or FIL.envelope. At key group level, I'm also going to add in an LFO. I'm going to add this to the scent control, the the fine pitch control, just to add a little bit of movement there. And we want to just drop the depth. If you're using this in unipolar mode, uh, it'll run from zero to max. If you're going to be setting your controls in the middle, you're going to want to turn your depth down to 50 so you don't have it stuck on either side. We can also turn this down a little bit. We don't need as much modulation. Let's up the frequency a little bit. Cool. And I want to get a bit of... Um, let's use a slightly different speed for this. I want to get a bit of modulation happening on the pulse width. Uh, we can drop this one on our PWM. Again, I'm just going to drop the depth down a little bit. Let's hit our amp envelope and just kind of bring this in a little bit more slowly. We are making a pad after all. Like a really lush, thick sound there right now. Um, we're going to use the new filter. We're going to drop in a VCF20. Back that down a little bit and let's add our filter envelope to the filter cutoff. Drop the amount of modulation and we'll bring that down a little bit. sounding pretty cool so now we're going to look at another layer which is going to add a little level of complexity and a sort of more dynamic feel to these pads uh, how we're going to do that is create a new layer 
because I actually want to have individual effects for that layer as well. Um, we're not putting effects on the pad layer. Uh, we might run a sort of global reverb over everything as well, uh, at the end. Um, but for now, let's do that and add a new key group. And we can just mute the pad for now. So I'm going to be working with just a sine wave here. Um, the sine wave also is great because you can actually modulate the um, pulse width as well and you get quite a nice sort of almost saw wave when you get right up to the top there. So what I want to do now is run a event script on this layer uh, using one of the new sequencer tools. We're going to go down to our script processor sequencing and let's bring in the wave sequencer. So as we spoke about in the overview of all the new features, this one sort of it pulsates between left and right. Every time it hits the extremity, it plays a note. The cool thing about this is they all start at different times as well. So you kind of get this really nice spread of um, sort of random notes or random pulsating movement. Um, we're going to have to adjust these. Let's start off by randomizing the, these and see what we come up with. We may need to adjust some of them uh, a little bit to make sure that there's none of them are playing too quickly. Uh, the gates will leave at 50%. I'm going to randomize the panning. Okay, there already I can see that's a bit too fast. I kind of want these to be pulsing a little bit slower. So let's uh, let's go up with this one. Perhaps I should keep these all synced. We'll try that for now, see what happens. Bear with me, we're going to get there in the end. Let's um, now go down to our amp envelope. I want to kind of have something with less attack here, and I want this to run out, and I want those notes to hold on to the end. Uh, so we'll add a bit of release and a decay. That's closer to what we're looking for. Now, what I want to do is alter the waveform a little bit uh, to create sort of moments where it becomes more saw-like and uh, changes the pulse width modulation there. So um, let's play around with some modulation. I want to make sure that these are in the key group mod section as well, so that they're polyphonic. Uh, I don't want them sort of in a layer above this so that they'd be controlling everything at the same speed. Uh, if you're connecting them up to other parts. So let's just, uh, we'll bring in, let's try out the multi LFO. And we're gonna add that to our pulse width modulation. So it's sounding all right. We need to give this a little bit more depth now. Let's go ahead and add in a uh, delay onto this as well. We'll just grab a preset, the dual delay. Let's go stereo delay. We'll change this one slightly to eighth dotted. Might slow down the delay a little bit too. I 
I'm also going to EQ this at this stage as well. Uh, we'll bring in the digital EQ here. I might as well just move that to before the delay. And I want to cut off some of the low end because uh, I'm not interfering with the bottom end of the pad too much. see as well if we can maybe add some modulation to the speed of the LFO2. We'll go to add modulation, key group level. Let's go with the smooth random. We'll use as much of the new stuff as possible. Uh, we're going to slow this one right down. So you can see it's not really giving us the effect that we want right now that uh, because it's re-triggering every time that a pregiator is triggering a new new note. So we'll set that to no re-trigger. Additionally, I'm going to add the amp envelope to the PWM, just a little bit of that as well, just to kind of bring it up with each note. We'll add that in too. Actually, decouple these at some point as well to see if we get an even more random. But let's um, let's stick our pad back in now. We're going to unmute that. Uh, we'll just watch our volumes. I might need to bring the gain down on number two. Let's just adjust that slightly. Going up to 12 semitones there. I'm just going to remove that smooth random. That's much better. I was getting too much uh, sort of jerky movement from that smooth random modulation on the LFO speed. That's much better now. So we can start looking at finishing this off now. Uh, for starters, it really needs a big reverb. Um, we'll just go with the default and dial something in here. And here we go. Um, let me just add in a gain matrix here as well. That we could just up our volume slightly.
And there you have it, guys. A beautiful sounding pad from uh, Falcon using some of the new features in 2.5, the wave sequencer, the new filters, and some of the new modulation sources. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you soon here at Marula Music. Cheers. Thank you.